I'm going to talk a little bit about how we assess kids in our practice for airway orthodontics and expanders. The first thing I like to do is find out why the child is in my practice. Could be crowded crooked teeth, mouth breathing, bad sleep, ADHD-like behavior, bedwetting, all kinds of different things that can be related to things that we can correct. Before we get into all the specifics, the first thing I like to do is figure out why is this child not growing to be the right size and shape where we're seeing all these problems. If we cannot correct these root cause issues, they're going to recur and they're going to plague us throughout our lives. At the heart of these root cause issues are tethered oral tissues, lip ties, tongue ties, cheek ties, also called buckle ties. The tongue is our natural expander. When we're eating, when we're talking, the tongue puts an outward pressure and it puts pressures on our jaws. It'll cause them to grow to be the right size and shape. At least it's a big factor. Lip ties and cheek ties are on the outside. They will put strong retractive pressure when the lips and cheeks are too tightly attached to our upper jaws. When we introduce expanders to get our kids to grow outwards, if lip and cheek ties are still pulling back, we will not get results that are as good. So these are the reasons why it's important to diagnose these root cause issues. All of the kids that we see are experiencing underdevelopment. That's why they're coming to see us. And we're going to be recommending expanders that will get outwards growth in different directions. We need to quantify how much and where these underdevelopments are so that we can find the right expanders to help these kids out. We will also be recommending myofunctional therapy. That's therapy that will train the muscles in and around the mouth and the tongue to posture properly, that's how we're going to correct the root cause issues. If all you do are the expanders, you're going to be disappointed. Let's get started and talk about what we do when the kids come into the office. The first thing we'll do is we'll take a CBCT, which is a 3D x-ray, and that will show us a lot of different things. We'll see the size of the upper jaw, the lower jaw, we'll see tongue posture, we'll see how large the tonsils and adenoids are. We'll see the size and shape of any unerupted adult teeth. We want to get an idea of how big these adult teeth are to see how in the world we're going to create enough room for them to come up into the mouth and bite and function properly and be straight. We want to know if there are any discrepancies between the size and shape of the upper jaw. Maybe the upper jaw is sitting way out and the lower jaw is sitting way back. These patterns of underdevelopment are really important when determining the right expander for your child. We do about 10 different types of expansion appliances for kids on a regular basis. I can tell you that there's not any one expander that is a one size fits all expander. During our assessment appointments, we'll obviously be taking a look in your child's mouth. We will actually see with our own eyes, whether there's a presence of like lip ties, cheek ties, tongue ties. When it comes to lip ties, what we'll do is we'll actually pull the lip out and up and we'll actually take a look to see, well, how high, how tight is the attachment between the lip muscle and the upper jaw? We'll also wanna see, well, how tight is it? Just like you can see how tight a rubber band is. It can be really tight, it can be a little bit tight, or it can be quite elastic. All these things are like very relevant. Cheek ties, we'll take a look up, we'll put our fingers in there and see if we see any tight cheek attachments. When people open their mouths, these cheek attachments can really pull in and cheek ties can be restrictions to outward growth for sure. In fact, most of the time when I see the presence of cheek ties and lip ties, we'll also see that that's the exact area where those kids have structural deficiencies. Tongue ties are a really big deal. In fact, the tongue posture, that is a tongue where it is at rest, if it's not positioned up on the palate with light suction, when kids go to sleep, the tongue muscle relaxes, and especially when there's not a lot of room in the mouth and the jaws are positioned back, the tongue will be right back in the throat, causing the obstructive conditions that are hurting the sleep. When there's airway obstructions at nighttime, we'll see the mouths open up. We'll see clenching sometimes, probably not all night long, but periodically, like every 30, 40, 30 to 45 minutes. We can see these clenching episodes. Sometimes we'll have parents come in and I'll say, 
I hear this quenching. Is that normal for my kids to quench their teeth while they're sleeping? It is absolutely not normal for kids to sleep and quench their teeth. Crooked, crowded, buck teeth. We should not see these kinds of things, especially with the baby teeth in the mouth. When you see baby teeth, there should actually be nice natural spacing between the baby teeth. It's important to see how the upper and lower jaws come together. The lower front teeth should be sitting right behind the upper front teeth. The lower jaw should not be sitting back, shouldn't be sitting off to the side. We should not see lower teeth out ahead of upper teeth. That's what we call a cross bite. Deep bites. A deep bite would be where the lower jaw is sitting back compared to the upper jaw and the lower jaw is biting up towards the palate. I'm not gonna go through all these poor bite relationships, but different expansion appliances are better at correcting size shape discrepancies between the upper and lower jaw. That's a much different situation when the upper and lower jaws are both small, but they're the same kind of small. A really critical assessment is the actual magnitude of the underdevelopment. Some kids are a little bit small, some kids are a lot small. Sometimes kids are extremely small. We also pay attention to the tongue size. Some kids actually have tongues that really aren't that big. Other kids have tongues that are huge. The size of the tongue will sometimes give us an idea of how large that child is actually gonna grow to be. I have no way of knowing how big a six-year-old child is gonna be when they're 20. So we're doing extrapolations. If I see really large adult teeth, I see a really large tongue, they came in with a parent who has large structure, we're gonna certainly be thinking that these kids need bigger mouths than we might expect had we not taken these things into consideration. Every child that comes into our practice will leave with a treatment plan that's customized for them. They'll know what it is we're recommending, how long it'll take, what to expect during treatment, and what the expected outcome is. With kids, there'll be follow-up treatment into the future. If a child comes in at eight, their expansion treatment will probably be done at nine, and we will be recommending that they come in a year or so later, possibly a little more, a little less, just to see what's going on. In our treatment plans, there will always be a recommendation for an expander. There'll be recommendations for myofunctional therapy because we need to strengthen and train all the muscles that are in and around the mouth perfect our tongue posture. That's super important. In fact, one of the biggest goals of treatment is to strengthen and train the tongue to stay up on the palate so it's not falling back in the throat during sleep. We will also make recommendations that we release all tethered oral tissues like lip ties, tongue ties, cheek ties. We have a CO2 laser in our office called the white scalpel and we perform those procedures in our office.